Alright, Merlin F15, run our way to the nearby low sec to catch some miners, please approach me. Roger that. Trying to maintain speed, Commander. Merlin F15, you are falling behind. Did you equip a micro warp drive? Uh, no sir, I have an afterburner. Alright, return to docking ring and refit, please. Understood. Station requesting permission to dock. Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about the subject of fitting and not only how to fit a specific ship but sort of how to approach the whole idea of fitting. As we saw in a little intro, if you don't have the right propulsion module it can affect the way your ship behaves in a fleet or even in a solo scenario. So what are the kind of things that we need to think about when fitting a ship? and firstly let's see how that will work so you can right click a ship and show info and then on the top left here you can uh, left click and simulate ship and then you get to this menu here where you have uh, the empty ship uh, the hardware and the hulls and fits in the hulls and fits you can select different types of ships in order to fit them up and in the hardware is the place where you find your modules as well as your charges something like ammunition or um, cap boosters and stuff like that so what do we think before we fit a ship what do we take into consideration some of the things i come up with is what do i want my ship to do you know what's the purpose of my ship in this case we're gonna fit up a merlin and i want to be a brawler so a close range fighter and i also want to do pvp with it uh, then the next thing we need to consider is what are my ship's bonuses and in order to do that you can right click the window over here or even the ship in the selection and you go to traits and it'll tell you exactly what the ship does and you can have on the top here the ship characteristics so this will be fitted with small modules it does use hybrid turrets and is generally good for combat and useful with shields so like a shield tank and stuff like that then for the ship's bonuses itself, we can see that they scale up per level, so uh, level 1 will give you 5% to small hybrid turrets and 4% to all shield resistances and the more you level up to level 5, you multiply that. So this ship is good with the hybrid turrets, the small ones, which deal a fairly high amount of damage and has a bonus to shield resistances, basically making its shield tank a lot stronger. So we gotta take that into account when uh, we fit the ship uh, the other thing you need to consider when um, fitting a ship and that can come maybe on the later stages when you actually see what you put on the ship is what will be some of the weaknesses and maybe what are some of the strengths of your ship I can tell you from experience that one of the weaknesses of the Merlin would be to nude it out as the hybrid turrets do use capacitor to run um, so that can be problematic and as well as the fact that they would have kind of a close range you got to be really close with the blasters let's say so that's one of the weaknesses and since this is a frigate it is also a bit weaker in general uh, benefiting more from the fact that it's small and fast it will mitigate damage uh, with its speed and is able to get in and out of hostile territory a bit easier due to its faster warp speed a thing we can see over here on the right uh, calculated in the align time so the faster your line time the faster you are in getting in warp and it can save you from potential gate camps or even warping out of a belt if someone warps to you to let's say start a combat you don't want so let's get down into the fitting of this merlin and one of the questions i get asked a lot is how do i fit my ship and usually newer players um, don't have an idea of what to put on their ships they would like a quick tip or a trick or something like that and that's very hard to provide because fitting ships is pretty complicated uh, if you look in the module section you have so many options that you can put on your ship uh, if we go to electronic warfare we have a lot of categories a lot of different modules that can fit on even a frigate or a cruiser uh, you know different kinds of armor tanks and whatnot two types of propulsion but even as propulsion goes uh, you have different sizes, you have different names to them, you have Tech 2. So it can be very discouraging for a new player to figure out what do they put on their ship and what works. And I'm going to try to elaborate a bit on that in this video. 
So let's start small at first. I want to show you uh, one difference that um, really helps you fit your ships. So firstly, we looked earlier at what kind of um, guns this ship uses. So that's ho small hybrid turrets. You can find that in the traits. So we're going to navigate to the hybrid turrets, small. And in this case, we're going to be using blasters. And here's where I want to show you a little trick let's say or a tip uh, about guns and this applies to guns only uh, missiles have sort of a different arrangement to them but if we take a look here the you have three types so it's electron ion and neutron blasters in this case and they all correspond to a little difference in how they perform if we open up the electron we can see that it uses uh, 8 teraflops of cpu and 4 megawatts of power grid now if you open up the ion we would see that that went up a bit and then if you go to neutron it's even higher now what does this mean the electron is the cheapest to fit type weapon but the lowest damage and the lowest range let's fit one up right there and the ion is sort of a middle ground and the neutron is the higher end of this kind of weapons so they will actually use a different amount of cpu and power grid and they'll give you different performances and let's load it up with faction ammo in this case for small blasters it's recommended to use Kaldari Navy Antimatter small and we can double click and it loads into each gun and let's see a bit of the difference so the first one uh, it gives us pretty good tracking it gives us 29.3 uh, DPS and, and take into account that this is with my skills you're gonna have a difference here when you're gonna try this the ion gives us a bit better range and a bit better DPS so from 29 to 31.4 and the neutron gives us the best range the best DPS but it lowers in tracking if you notice the trend here if I'm going from the small weapon which is the electron the ion lowers a bit the tracking but gets higher damage and higher range and the neutron is the highest in that regard this is something to consider because all guns have this pattern where you have two or three selections of a certain weapon type and this applies to uh, rail guns so if you would go to the rail gun section at small you see that there's three types here as well so the 125 millimeter 150 and 75 75 being the smallest usually look at the name or try to um, press info and see which one has the lower fitting uh, requirements and that will tell you which is the smallest version of that kind of gun uh, and the one with the higher requirements is the, the large version uh, of that specific gun type so let's go ahead and clear this out and actually start fitting uh, our ship here uh, you can clear out the fitting by right clicking your simulation window and pressing the strip fitting you know, get rid of everything for this ship, because I have tech 2 blasters, I'm going to be using that. And that's another consideration when fitting a ship. What kind of skills do you have? Um, and what can you actually put on your ship? In most cases, tech 2 is better, especially when we're talking about guns. But it's there's a, there are exceptions to this. Um, for this ship, I want to put light ion blasters tech 2. Now, there's a certain order I do the fittings. You don't need to kind of follow it by um, by the book but I like to put in the guns first and maybe propulsion and the scrambler or disruptor it gives me an idea of what's the speed and damage of my ship and then I can adjust the tank and, and other things so we're gonna use propulsion and in this case I'm gonna be using a micro world drive so in order to decide which module I'm gonna put let's take a look at the info and if you go to the variations, you can see a different range of, uh, of modules here. So I'm going to stick to Tech 1 and Tech 2 for now. Here we can notice that they have different fitting requirements. Uh, if we go to the Tech 2 micro drive, it uses 25 with 17 megawatts. And if you would go to the compact one, which is the one I prefer, especially on frigates, uh, we can notice that it's lower. 
so you gain a bit more space to to fit stuff on your ship and in certain cases that could be necessary as well as i believe the price and that's something you got to take into consideration i believe the tech 2 micro warp drive is like 3.7 mil whereas the compact one uh, would be only 400,000 isk which is a lot cheaper and so it lowers the price of your ship you know, which is important so let's fit a 5mn micro warp drive and you can see that there's larger values here and the 50mn is um, for cruisers and we can already see that it wouldn't fit it tells you here that it uses a lot of power grid and you can use that to figure out if the module is for your ship or not and the 500mn is for battleship um, level ships now the other option we would have here is we could put an afterburner we can go to the 1mn compact as well um, and here's an interesting point we can make about the propulsion choice the micro warp drive will make you faster but it's going to be turned off by a module called the scrambler and let's fit one now let's fit a tech 2 scrambler on our little merlin um, so this scrambler will turn off the micro warp drive but will not turn off the afterburner and another point, you can actually have a micro warp drive and an afterburner on the same ship, but you can only have one active at a time. It even tells you when you try to activate it, that you can't activate them at the same time. You would have to turn off the afterburner and then uh, you turn on the micro warp drive and that's how you get that performance. So the difference in speed is quite huge. It's 2.7 kilometers per second here for the micro warp drive and it would be 969 meters per second with the afterburner uh, the other difference is that the afterburner does not increase your signature radius we can notice that here uh, basically it doesn't make you a bigger target well as the micro warp drive does make you quite bigger i think cruiser almost battle cruiser size uh, which makes you easier to hit and larger guns or missiles will apply damage better to you in this case and my choice for this fit is going to be a micro warp drive because i'm trying to get closer to my teammates or get closer to a potential target as fast as possible um, even if when i actually get close most likely i will turn it off uh, and just orbit at my normal speed which at that point will be 387 meters per second um, and you can see how this fitting window works too so if it's green the module is activated and it'll do the math on your capacitor and your speed and everything if you press it again it becomes red it's overheated and it'll give you the statistics for an overheated module and uh, like this it's offline so it's not even on the ship technically and when it's gray it's just turned off so it'll do the math on what it does when it's on your ship but it's gonna be uh, turned off in this case so far we put the propulsion we put a scrambler which in pvp will help us uh, hold the enemy down and prevent them from warping and uh, we're missing tank and a bunch of other modules so let's get down to that one other thing that is very confusing for uh, um, rookies, let's say, is the type of tank you put on your ship. In this case, we're going to go with a shield tank because the ship has shield resistance bonuses. And we're actually going to put a medium shield extender. Even though this is a small ship, uh, medium shield extenders fit on it. We'll see in, in a second how, because right now it shows us that it doesn't fit. And let's say we would be in a cruiser, we could put a large shield extender this is one of the exceptions where the name can be a bit confusing and you put a medium module on a small ship and that wouldn't work with guns for example but it does work with the tank and another module we need here is going to be a web uh, we're going to use the compact version as we discussed previously i generally use uh, the compact version for certain tech one modules they're easier to fit and the web will slow down our target which actually allows us to get in the range of our blasters which right now we can't see the actual range but let's put ammunition in it and we can see that our effective range would be 3.2 uh, kilometers with faction ammo but if you put the specialized tech 2 ammo in this case let me put it in here it would be the void it's actually closer but with a lot higher damage it will get up to 157 dps so 
we basically hug the target with this ship but the advantage is that it does a lot of damage for a frigate another module i really like to put on pvp ships let's find it over here is a damage control and we put the damage control tech 2 which is fairly easy to skill into and it'll give us more shield resistances armor and hull now hull, hull resistance is very important especially in pvp because it gives you a bit of extra buffer here in the hull and that could actually decide the fight you know in many cases you end up in structure as we call it or hull and that can um, you know that can provide you the win now we're at the stage of sort of problem solving the rest of the fit and we don't have enough power grid and there's a really nice module for that called uh, you can find it under engineering auxiliary power control and it'll give you and let's look at it it'll give you a flat 10 megawatt bonus now on a cruiser 10 megawatts is not that much you would be better off putting something like uh, a reactor control unit that gives you a percentage bonus to your power grid in that case it's 15 percent but for frigates 15 percent out of 63 uh, i don't think it's that uh so putting a flat 10 percent uh, 10 sorry 10 megawatts is way better uh and that actually fixes our problem here uh we're actually left off with a bit of power grid so our fit is almost complete we're almost there what we can do to make this even better because one of our strengths is the higher dps at the cost of the range uh, blasters with tech 2 ammo tech 2 blasters tech 2 ammo deal a lot of damage so we can try to increase that and we can try to put a damage increase here tech 2 and we can see that it got up to 193 dps which is fairly high uh, for this uh, kind of ship so this kind of uh, completes our fit here in terms of the modules and of course the medium extender the medium shield extender gives us our tank which is in the form of more shield uh, hp um, with decent resistances but maybe we can even help them out a bit um, and last stage would be to actually put in the cargo hold the ammunition or whatever else we need for the ship always remember to do that you never want to undock with no ammo in your cargo hold or something like that on to the topic of rigs uh, so this ship being a frigate will use small rigs and you know, I could put rigs for speed and I could put you know rigs for more damage maybe sure that, that can work but one thing that's important in PvP is to have, when possible, well-rounded resistances on your tank. We're not going to focus on uh, filling up holes, as we call it here, like we have an explosive hole in our hull, in our armor, sorry. Um, we're not really focusing on, on fitting this up, filling this up. We're focusing on making our shields better. So, we can put uh, anti-EM which will raise our EM resistance here. We can put an anti-thermal, which will make it overall decent. So it's above 50% for all resistances, while some actually have higher resistances. So we can be good on that. Now I could put another anti-EM, let's say, and that's gonna make my EM resistance bigger. In certain cases, that's a good idea. If you know you're gonna be fighting EM ships, but the purpose with this ship would probably be to engage other frigates uh, or even a mining ship uh, or a small target like that and I don't have the guarantee that they're going to be shooting EM so what would be a better rig here that is going to benefit me in every case right not just in case I find an EM ship in case I find you know like a Tristan or something else like an Atron with blasters so I could put a uh, defense field extender which uh, makes my shield even bigger giving me overall more tank so it, it helps me versus EM because I do have a bit more tank but it helps me versus everything else as well so I think that's a better rig to put in this case but no fit would be complete without the actual ammunition needed to use your guns so in this case we're gonna be putting the tech 2 ammunition and we're already loaded with void so we're gonna put a bit here they're not super expensive so we can put a bit more like 3000 let's say and if we simulate the null 
it gives us a better range let's say the target is just outside our range or is trying to scram kite us basically sit at the edge of your scrambler and using a web to get away from your blaster range you can load this ammunition to get uh, up to 5.7 kilometers range with lower dps of course so we do need to put a bit of this here let's say 3000 as well and one other thing you can do is put the faction ammo, the antimatter charges S, which if you put it up here, it's not gonna give us a whole lot more range, but I think it's slightly better um, tracking. We're gonna test that. But this is a bit more pricey than the null and the void, so we're only gonna put like 1,500 on the ship. So let's compare this with void. So it's uh, 483 tracking with uh, 362 so the antimatter charge is gonna have better tracking so if you have something like a slasher or natron after burner fit it's gonna be moving very very fast uh, at close range to you you might not be able to hit it with the void you load up the antimatter charge s and you're gonna have better tracking with that and one other thing you can fit on your ship is the nanite paste for a frigate something between 20 to 40 is good let's put 30 and what this nanite paste will allow you to do is when you overheat the module and you're gonna get some heat damage in the combat uh, you can right click your module in space and uh, you're gonna have a repair button with a little number attached to it telling you how many nanite paste charges it will use to actually repair the module and this will be our complete fit right now it is going to be a brawling um, blaster merlin in this case now this brawling merlin uh, would be useful for a solo ship as well as a fleet ship i actually use this for uh, small merlin fleets that are actually pretty effective against other frigates um, and let's get over some of the strengths and weaknesses one of the strengths is that it has really good dps um, and it's fairly fast i mean with the micro drive not the fastest but but goes pretty fast uh not cap stable with the micro drive but if you turn it off it is actually cap stable uh, and one of the weaknesses would be let's say new thing if you get newted your scrambler turns off your web turns off and as well as your guns i mean your guns do need uh, capacitor even if a small quantity of it but it needs capacitor to run so if you have none you can't actually shoot your target so this is uh, a very affordable ship for um, for let's say a rookie or, uh, that's wanting to get into PvP uh, I actually have a version here that has T1 guns so we can actually save this we can put it right here the simulated version of what I just did and we can simulate another one so I have you can link these up in a notepad or even a chat channel you can drag it in fleet for example and link it uh, by dragging and dropping it and you can simulate another fit and this one is with tech 1 guns in case you don't have the tech 2 version but it mostly works the same way except you can't use the tech 2 ammunition for it uh, this one gets lower dps with roughly the same amount of ranges roughly the same amount of tank as well uh, so this is a very affordable frigate for um, rookies to get into pvp and it's very successful as well let's simulate back the one we had earlier um, so these are the main points to think about so let's let's get over them again uh, before you start fitting a ship things to consider uh, what do i want my ship to do in this case to brawl at close range and apply a lot of dps what are my ship's bonuses uh, bonuses to the damage of hybrid turrets and as well to shield resistances which we can see here that uh, they're fairly decent um, what are my weaknesses and strengths you know i'm vulnerable to nudes and my strength is that i'm fairly fast and and i apply a lot of damage and what are my skills in this case i can use tech 2 blaster so i opted to fit those on my ship uh, i hope this kind of uh, sort of presentation helps you understand fitting a bit better as well as understand how many things to consider while fitting a ship uh, obviously there's a lot of options over here um, a lot of modules a lot of rig choices to put on your ship and it can be very confusing at first um, you can take a look at the market and get familiar with the different kinds of modules just remember there are 
a couple of different types of guns for each uh, selection. Missiles works uh, work a bit differently. Uh, I haven't covered that, but they work a bit differently. They have their own sort of uh, type here. So if you go to rockets, there's only one type of rocket, and it goes up to tech two. And you can have, and that's short range, and you can have like light missile launchers, which is long range. So they're a bit more particular uh, missiles in themselves, but mostly follow the same kind of trend. And also uh, the name of the, uh, let's say, best Tech 1 named version is slightly different. It wouldn't be compact for the guns. You're going to find something like Arbalest, and you can see it's, it's all the way in the bottom of the list. So most likely this is the strong version of the Tech 1s. Um, or for guns, let's go to Blasters again. I think it, it's for this one's is like modal and for lasers it's uh, something similar and for like projectiles it's the prototype and so on so they each they have their own little naming convention there but generally you can find it by just going to one of the modules and seeing which one is in the list and maybe even checking the performance like fit them up load it up with ammo see how much damage it does and find out which one is the highest damaging uh, in that class the important thing to take out of this is that uh, they're a bit different to each other in terms of the fitting requirements and performance uh, themselves so that's my basic guide on on fitting and how to approach uh, fitting a ship uh, I might be making more of these to elaborate on certain subjects uh, and you can use this model uh, for a brawling ship for other ships like you can um, you know fit up a Tristan in a similar way uh, or a Natron or something like that that can be fit in a similar way and let's take a look at a comparison if we simulate a Condor which is another Tech 1 frigate and this would be loaded up with missiles so long range 28 kilometers range way lower dps a uh, bit faster than uh, merlin and with the long point so this actually orbits around 20 kilometers something holds point on the target and is cap stable so it keeps the micro warp drive on at all times and the low slots are for speed and the medium slots with a couple of small shield extenders because that's what they would fit here uh, in order to make this work and a rig for speed anti-EM and anti-thermal so the resistances are lower than the Merlin but it's faster and stays out of range most likely this condor could potentially kill the previous Merlin we showed because of its kiting capability and so this would be the difference between a brawler and a kiter a brawler would be using a scrambler uh, and the kiter would be using a warp disruptor and stay at longer ranges but they're both t1 frigates uh, in this case i hope this helps and uh, if you like my content please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video till then fly safe